Hello everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to another acrylic painting tutorial. In today's painting tutorial we're going to teach you how to paint realistic ocean waves. I'm going to teach you how to mix and make pastel tones so you can create realistic colours for your painting. How to create and block in waves and mix things like realistic turquoise colour. How to add highlights and shadows over the top to make your waves and your clouds come alive. So you can paint this fantastic landscape paint. So let's get into it. So it's an easy painting tutorial today. We're going to use the following colours. They are titanium white, cad yellow, matte orange, rose pink, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, iris purple, sap green and matte black. Now I have a burnt sienna painted canvas that I've used chalk to create an outline. I've got the horizon middle of the canvas exactly halfway down the canvas. We're going to have a large wave in the foreground and we're going to have another wave behind that and we're going to create colours to make them look 3D. We're going to have a little bit of a sun and some clouds but we really want to use pastel tones. I want to teach you how to make all pastel tones using white today. So the first tone we're going to make is a nice warm pinky orangey colour. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use tons and tons of white. So we're going to use predominantly white and all we're going to do is add a little bit of pink to the mix but three quarters white and just a dot, a quarter of pink and we're going to add a dot of purple just to bring it a bit cooler. And all we're going to do is make a lovely pastel colour. So all we're going to do today, we're going to make loads of nice shades of pastel tones using predominantly white and adding just a little bit of colour. And this is perfect if you're trying to create wispy sunsets, if you're trying to create nice calm sunsets. So you can add a little bit of heat to the mix, so just by adding a little bit of orange to your pink and you can make a much nicer sort of peachy tone very very pastel we're just going to put that in the middle so like always don't worry if you've got some of the burnt sienna shining through you don't have to paint your canvas burnt sienna i just do it so i can see especially when using these soft pastel colors areas that i've missed and areas that i need to use a thicker second coat of paint but what we're just trying to do, we're just trying to create a warm tone on the horizon and then just think of a mirror. What we're just trying to do is match it in the water below. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a underpainting where we have this nice, really nice blended sky and water. And then what we'll do is we'll put the sun and the clouds and the waves over the top and make them look 3D. So we're going to make another colour now, so we're going to get predominantly white again and a tiny bit of yellow. So we want lots and lots and lots of white. We can add a dot of purple. It's a little bit too much purple, so we've gone a bit grey. So don't worry if you do that, you can just put more white in to bring it back down and just add a dot of yellow. There we go. And we're going to make more white. And we're just going to make this little creamy yellowy colour. Still got a bit of purple in it, so it just looks nice and realistic. And while the colours are wet, we're just going to create X shapes with our brushes. And we're just going to blend the two tones together. So really, really easy. So just create X shapes like that. So rocking back and forth. And while the tones are wet, while the paint is wet, just mix them together. So I'm just going to put a little bit more yellow into the mix, plenty of white, so more white than anything to get that pastel colour. So if you want to make pastel shades at home of anything, all you've got to do is just use lots and lots of white and a dot of the colour you want to make. So if you want to make a pastel green, you just use plenty, plenty of white and just a touch of green if you want to make a pastel blue and so forth. So I'm just going to add some yellow and a tiny bit of purple just to suck a bit of the colour out. So all I'm doing, I'm just trying to mirror what's above in the sky, in the water below. So I'm just trying to mix the two. And as I say, don't worry if you've got horrible streaks like me. We'll go over this in a minute and make it look all nice and neat. We just want to sort of gauge where the colours are going to be. 
and then we'll neaten everything up in a minute. And then finally we're going to create this purpley pastel tone. So all we're going to do is get the cool iris purple and plenty and plenty of white. So if anyone hasn't got this cool iris purple to make it, all you do is just get a little bit of purple and add a little bit of cobalt blue to your purple and then use plenty of white and you should get a very pastel sort of lavender purple color. So just do the same trick, just create the X shapes with your brush and just merge it into the previous tone. So we just want to block it all in, just cover up that burnt sienna. So we're going to get some of the purple and white. it all together and then we're just going to mirror it in the bottom so what we're trying to do if you think of it we've got the pink in the middle the pinky orange and we've got yellow either side going upwards and going downwards and then we've got this lightly purple at the bottom so all I'm going to do just while it's wet I'm just going to mix a bit of that yellowy color don't worry if it's darker as I say we'll just neaten everything up it's a bit more purple at the bottom of the painting than it is at the top but what I'll do is once it's dry I'll just mirror it I'll just go over the top and just make it match so there we go super easy I'm just going to get some yellow plenty of white to make a pastel yellow and we're just going to do the beach so we're just going to do the sand, we're going to add a dot of black just to make a nice Naples yellow and a little bit of purple, just again a dot, just to make it look more earthy and natural. And we're just going to block in the bottom of the canvas just to create the beach. So this is going to be all the sand where the water comes up to at the bottom. So really, really easy. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to fast forward the footage a little bit. But all I'm doing, I'm just going over the top in the three same colours. So it was orange and pink with lots and lots and lots of white. And all I did was just go over the top. So in the middle, orange, pink and predominantly white. And then we're going to add yellow, lots and lots and lots of white and a dot of purple. And we're just going to mirror that so we're just going to have the pink in the middle and we're going to have the yellow color going up and going down and then we're just going to add a little bit more purple to our white and we're just going to create a light lavender tone at the top of our canvas and we're just going to do the same at the bottom because it was just a little bit too dark so we should have a mirror effect we should have the pinky orange and I'll put the speed back to how it was now we're all blocked in and what I've done I've measured the horizon nice and straight so we've got this nice straight chalk line I'm going to put in my Sun just using some titanium white so all I've done is I've just literally neatened it up so as I say if you want to pause the video and just catch up that's fine I just thought you might not want to sit there for 10 minutes just while I did the same technique that you just saw before. So all I'm going to do now, I'm going to take the pink colour we use, which was predominantly white, pink and a little bit of orange. I'm just going to make really, really subtle clouds. So I've zoomed in so you can see it. But all I've done, I've wiped most of the paint off my brush. I've got a dry brush just got a little round headed brush it's very very soft it's almost like a blender brush and I'm just trying to create far off wispy clouds that are just sort of fading off into the sky so now we've got that lighter yellowy white background sky when we add these sort of pinky hotter clouds they stand out a little bit now because we've got the lighter sky in the background so what we're trying to do by, by having hardly any paint and having your dry brush, you're just trying to push down onto the canvas and just let that chalky residue of the paint come off and that will create really wispy far away clouds. 
So these are all the clouds at the base of the horizon that just really low level. So that is fab. So I'm going to just mix some yellow and white and I'm going to create a really pastel yellow. So lots and lots of white and a dot of cad yellow. And all I'm going to do is do the same technique. I've got clean brush. My brush is completely dry. It's got no water on it whatsoever. And again, I'm just glazing over this area. I think I'm going to add just a tiny more yellow to the mix because I want to just add a little bit of heat. And what I'm trying to do, I'm just around the sun, I'm just trying to create a nice yellow soft glow. Again, it's really, really subtle. It's just to create sort of the, sh sh the light effect, sort of the shimmer in the sky from the sun. So again, it's really, really subtle. You probably can't see it very, very well. But later on, once it dries, it will dry a little bit dark and you'll be able to notice it. So again, same technique, just glazing over the top, just blending it in, just really softly. So it's almost like shading with a color pencil or like a crayon. By using a dry brush and hardly any paint, you can just glaze areas. So that looks really nice and far off. So please dry your canvas before applying painting tape. We've got the horizon directly halfway down the canvas. So I'm using an A4 canvas, which is the same size as um, what you print out your paper on, your documents on. So an A4 sheet of paper. That's the same size as this canvas. So all I've done is I've drawn the horizon dead bang in the middle. And while I've got it, I'm just gonna use some of that nice hot pink. And I'm just gonna add a few more little clouds. As I say, you hardly notice them at this point of the video, but it's just to sort of gauge where I want things to be and how dark and how light I, th I want them to be. A lot of these tutorials I do out of my imagination. So as I say, sometimes at the beginning, it's just trying to find your way and trying to see what looks realistic. So I'm just gonna have a few little clouds just sort of floating off into the distance really subtle and then we're going to start on the waves so that's nice and pushed back nice and pastel it's really really soft really like that so we're going to mix up some colors for our wave so we're going to get some cobalt blue and add plenty of white so just like we did with all the other pastel tones we want to add predominantly white a tiny bit of purple but predominantly white and a little bit of cobalt blue so we're going to do the same trick, but now with a cool color. And the reason we're using cobalt blue is because these waves in the far background are going to be a bit cooler. So we just want to make them a nice horizon line. So I'm going to go right up to the tape and I'm using a flat headed brush. And all I'm doing is going right up to the tape and I'm just creating a nice line for horizon. And then all I'm going to do is leave gaps and just create straight lines. So all I'm doing is create little straight lines. I'm letting some of the under painting shine through, which is that orangey pink. And I'm just creating straight lines in this blue color just to give the impression of far off waves. So cause our horizon is nice and far back by using this light sort of pastel blue it will just push it back and it will just make it look like it's fading off into the distance so again it's really subtle and while we've got this cool blue I'm just going to gauge where the light is as the light is going to be coming from the right hand side because the sun is on the right all the left hand side all the clouds and the sky will be getting a little bit cooler so I'm just experimenting with this nice cool blue where this area would be a bit more in the shade and a bit cooler. So I'm just trying to figure out how the light would work here. 
I think I'll come back to that. I'll have a think. <laughs> but I want to teach you how to paint waves. So I'm going to teach you how to make turquoise. So I've got a premixed turquoise here, but I'm going to show you how to make it. You get cerulean blue and yellow. And if you want it more green, you add plenty of yellow to your cerulean blue. And if you want it the same as me and you want it just a little bit more bluer, just add a little bit more cerulean blue. So that's all you do. So cerulean blue. So look, this is the one I've got pre-mixed. So if I add a little bit more cerulean blue than I have yellow, I'll get the exact same color. Look at that. So cerulean blue and yellow, and you'll make a fabulous turquoise that you can use for waves. So I'm going to add a little bit of white to the mix, just a little bit. And I'm going to use some of that mix we just used. So just off camera, I'm just using the light blue and white that we just mixed. I'm just making the turquoise just a little bit softer because all these waves are going to be fading off into the distance. So again, I'm using a flat headed brush. I'm leaving gaps in the underpainting to shine through and I'm just creating sort of fake texture to imply that there's waves. So can you see how that's working? I'm just using this flat headed brush just to create little divots and these divots are starting to look 3D and they look like waves, the caps of waves. So look, all I'm doing, I'm just mixing the turquoise just to make it a little bit lighter and I'm just going up towards the horizon just so there's not a big jump between the really pastel blue and the turquoise. So just by mixing the two together, I'm just trying to merge the two tones together just so there's not a huge jump. And they should look like they're naturally fading off into the distance. Look at that. Easy trick. So we're going to get our turquoise. We're going to load up our flat brush and we're going to stop putting in the waves. So I'm going to have a bit of a bigger wave here. So plenty of turquoise on your brush. And we'll just go across and we'll make a big wave. So what we're doing, we're blocking in all the part of the wave that's got its back to the sun. So this is all going to be the shadow. So this turquoise, what it's doing, because it's darker in color and tone, it's bringing it towards the viewer. So by using darker colors, what you're doing is you're making things look like they're coming towards you. So what we're trying to do to create a 3D painting is use darker colors to make these waves look like they're crashing into the beach and coming towards the viewer. And by using the light pastel tones in the background, we're trying to push that area back so all I'm doing, I'm just blocking in where I want sort of the sea foam bit and the sort of foam of the wave to be. I'm using the turquoise to make out where I want the sort of actual high rising water to be. So don't worry if it's wonky or anything. Most waves are just want to create shapes. So try to create sort of a rough wonky line. It should look like a wave. There we go. And all we're going to do with the same color, we're just going to do the same technique we did in the background, just in the foreground. But again, because we're using a darker color, it should bring it towards the viewer. So what you want to do as a painter is use your darkest colors in the foreground to bring things right up towards the viewer and you want to use lighter pastel tones in the far distance to make your background look far away so as i keep teaching you these paint recipes you don't have to spend a lot of money buying paints when you first start i know paints are very expensive so hopefully if you learn how to make your own tones and colors 
and you can learn these tricks you can make your work at home look much more realistic so I'm just making some little diagonal lines coming off the wave just to make it look more three-dimensional just gonna have some little bigger waves just in the background why not so just subtle but just make them slightly bigger but can you see now because we've got the lovely transition underneath in the background underpainting now the turquoise is over the top it's tricking your eye and it's making it look more realistic so we're going to get cerulean blue and cobalt blue we're going to mix the two together and add plenty of white so cerulean blue and cobalt blue and we're going to make this lovely dark blue so cerulean blue cobalt blue and plenty of white and then we're just going to make a lighter shade of it so the same color but we're just going to make a lighter shade with much more white so we've got two shades of the same blue We've got a cooler one and a lighter one and we're just going to use the lighter one first and we just I think it's a bit too light for what I want to do so we'll go what I'm trying to do if we just add a little bit of the darker tone to the mix what I'm trying to do I'm just trying to create sort of where the the water the wave comes up onto the beach so where your water sort of comes up onto the shore you get this sort of nice shadow so I don't want to make it too dark because it's sort of mixing in with the sand so there we go that looks nice so just to give it a nice flat ridge and then we're just going to mix the two shades of blue together so the dark blue and the light blue Got a little bit more turquoise just so there's not as big a jump and I'm just going to create a shadow underneath this wave so if you imagine where the wave comes up to the beach we've got our big wave coming towards the shadow water it's just going to create a little bit of a shadow you're going to get some shadows underneath it all that foam and wash comes onto the beach so all I'm using is I'm using this tone to bridge between the really harsh turquoise and the really light underpainting so by just using in between tone, I call it a bridge tone, we can just interlink them and you haven't got a jump from the really harsh turquoise to the really bright underpainting. It just looks more realistic. So we're just merging the two colors really, really easy. And then I'm just going to get the darker shade of blue, just got a little bit of white to it, and we're just going to create some of the shadows on all the sea foam. So all when the foam sort of cascades and sort of smashes into each other, and you get all the bubbles and foam, some of it's going to have some shadows. So again, just using this cool blue underneath this wave here and then we're going to use it in the far distance just to create some foam sorry if the camera is suddenly going a bit out of focus I think it keeps trying to focus on my hand so apologies to everyone watching at home So there we go so again it's just to bridge the colors by using a little lighter blue more of a cool tone because it's got that cobalt blue 
We just add in some shadows before we put the highlights over the top. It's really, really easy. So that looks fab, that's better. So I'm going to get some white, a little bit of that blue, just a tad, but predominantly white. And I'm just going to add some highlights to this far away wave. So all I'm doing, just like we did with the clouds, I've got a dry brush, I'm just gently pushing into that darker blue. The white will dry a little bit darker because that darker blue will shine through it. So we just want to add some soft highlights just to create the foam effect of the wave. The same here. So we're all starting to add some detail just to make it look more 3D. There's some bubbles and froth. Now with a wave, it comes over like a barrel, like a tube. So there's an easy way to do it, but trying to make the um, foam all this sort of wash when the water sort of smashes in and you get this sort of white and blue sort of bubbles and it all sort of comes together it's quite difficult to make look 3d so our wave that's in the middle that's further back absolutely looks awesome but trying to now this is coming into the foreground we want to make it look a bit more detailed so sometimes that can be a bit of a struggle so what i'm doing i'm using white and i'm using the light blue to try to create some texture to make it look almost like a barrel. So when the wave comes into the shore, it looks like it's smashing into it. But I think it looks still a bit too flat. There's not any detail really is there on the, um, on the foam. So I'm just debating what to do. So I was going to do it all with a fine liner, but I think it would take way too long. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some turquoise, I'm just going to block it back in. And we'll do it the quick and easy way, I'm going to teach you a much easier way. So I'm just going to block this area back in with some turquoise. And I'm just going to make it a little make the foam look a little bit less flat so I'm just going to take my tape away first so we've got this nice straight horizon so look at that, that looks fantastic so it's all starting to take shape now so I was as I say going to use a fine liner and do it all in detail and put loads of bubbles in and things like that but I think it would just take way too long so what I'm going to do, I'm going to swap to a palette knife and I'm going to get the darker blue and I'm going to put the shadow on first, so I'm just going to get a palette knife and I'm just going to put a shadow tone on first oops, for some reason can't get any on my... oh, and now I put too much! oh god, I'm having a day today too little one minute and too, too much the next minute so what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to just put on this dark blue <laughs> But for some reason, it's not coming off my palette knife. I'm just trying to lay down the shadow first. There we go. Oh, it's all gone mucky. So what I'm going to do, being the professional that I am, I'm going to use my finger, I think. So I'm just going to spread it at the bottom. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a dark shadow colour for the base of all the foam. So if you see the far off wave, it looks like it's more 3D. So what I'm trying to do is, this is in the foreground, I'm trying to use that bluey purpley sort of dark shadow to have the sort of underneath. So this is all the area of the froth that's not getting any sunlight. 
And while I've got that, I'm just going to create the barrel sort of effect with the same color. So I'm just going to use it at the top. There we go. So that looks a little bit better. I'm just going to get some turquoise. So sometimes your equipment doesn't work, sometimes you have an off day. Don't worry, you can always, as I say, paint over things. I'm normally a whiz with a palette knife, so I don't know what was going on today. So look, this is all dry now. So I've dried the blue area, I've just used the hair dryer. And the reason I've dried it is because I'm going to use complete bright titanium white and I don't want the blue and the white to mix. So if you dry your painting before you add the bright white highlights. Now what you can do with a palette knife is just scrape areas and scrape upwards and this creates the illusion of spray. So see how I'm doing it? I'm just going upwards. Just really little amount of paint and I'm leaving little gaps and I'm trying to create the illusion of all the sort of froth when it smashes all together. So I'm just splatting areas and I'm going up. And I'm leaving little gaps so that dark blue shines through. So it looks like shadows. So all I'm trying to do is try to create the texture here in the foreground. So as I say, it's an easy trick. Just scrape upwards and you get that sort of little spray. Take your time. And again, what the white should do is it should dry and sort of absorb some of that blue. So if you think, look, we just put the highlight on the far off, the, the wave behind it, and look how blue it looks, that froth. It's sort of dried because it sort of always dries, sort of absorbs sort of the underpainting color. So there we go, it looks more frothy and smashing together now. So just by using a palette knife you can add a lot of texture to your artwork. So look, I'm just scraping up to create the sort of spray. There we go, that looks more choppy, that looks better. We're just going to do the same on this side. So there's the subscribe button. If you haven't um, put the bell notification, there's a little bell button here on YouTube. If you click it, you'll be um, told when there's a new tutorial. I do a new tutorial every single week, but you will know exactly when it's launched. So if you want to be one of the first people to watch it, you'll get alerted. Please um, like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And thank you so much to everyone who supports the channel and writes in the comments and likes all the videos and shares them. Thank you so much. The channel is growing really well now and it's all thanks to you guys. And the more you share the work and the more you like and comment, the more artists get to see these tutorials. So thank you so much because you're helping other fellow artists. So look, I'm just using the turquoise just to create some shadow around the wave. Now we've got that lovely sort of more texture with the palette knife. We're just going to start putting in some detail. So a lot of trying to be a bit more photorealistic is just going back and forth. It's just gauging an area and just seeing where it needs work in some bits if you change an area just going back and just reworking what you just did okay so we're going to mix a shadow color for our underneath our wave so we're going to mix sap green and cobalt blue together and we should get a very dark greeny blue so almost like indigo so sap green and cobalt blue and what we're going to do, now we've got our lovely sort of 3D foam in, we're going to go underneath it. So if you imagine all underneath, you're going to have this really dark shadow. And again, if you make it sort of bobbly, it will look more 3D. You don't want it totally flat. 
so try to sort of add the illusion of texture by just making it sort of bobbly so all it is is sap green and cobalt blue and again I'm just gonna go sort of diagonally just rub it with my finger so we're just trying to emphasize the shadow here in the foreground because I want this wave to look like it's right coming towards the viewer so as I say it's not hard any of these techniques they just you've just got to do one at a time so by doing the underpainting first and then putting the turquoise on and then using the palette knife and then now just add in all the shadows and we'll, in a minute we'll just put some little finishing touches you just stage by stage just making it look more realistic so under this part of the wave this is hardly getting any sunlight so this is just it's going to be a little bit darker as well so we just want to emphasize that and what you can do is just use the exact same color so sap green and cobalt blue and you can just go underneath with a fine liner this far off wave to again make it look more 3D so same technique and you can to make the wave look a little bit deeper put some in, in the wave now I think my brush is a bit too dry and that's why I'm getting these sort of rough divots in my canvas here so look I'm just going to dip it in some water just going to smooth that out there we go so all I'm doing I'm just making that color just emphasize how deep the water is so you can use a darker color to make parts of your wave look deeper so if you want to emphasize an area of your wave to make it look deeper just use a darker tone and that will just make it a look like it's in the foreground and B make it look like the water is deeper so I'm just going to mix some of that sap green and cobalt blue I'm just going to add a little bit of turquoise to it just so again it's not too much of a jump and again I'm just going to use my flat brush and just here in the foreground I'm just going to create a little subtle edges so you can either use a fine liner or you can use a flat brush with a really fine edge and again all we're going to do just like we did with the waves we're just going to put some shadow just so it looks like that blanket of water that's coming up onto the sand is more 3D and it's got some shadow peeking out. So the same technique as the wave, we're just going to use this dark colour just to put some wave divots in the foreground. So again we've saved our darkest colours to here in the foreground to bring them towards the viewer so the same technique all I'm doing I'm just creating lines and little divots in the water with this um, now dark color which was sap green and cobalt blue so what we're trying to do is we're trying to imply definition we're trying to imply detail by just using this darker color and because I've used the darker color on one side of the wave on the right I'm just blending some of the darker tone on the left so what we're trying to do is we're trying to work on our transitions so by using the dark tone that we've mixed and then by just adding a little bit of turquoise we can blend it in so it doesn't look so harsh so even here in the foreground if we're adding that dark tone that cobalt blue and sap green by just adding a little bit of turquoise to it we can blend it so just like the underpainting where the transitions are really smooth we want to do the same so going back to just pure turquoise not any cobalt blue not any sap green we can just blend the shadows and the light so if you think when you watch water the transitions are seamless you don't even notice them so that's what we want to try to aspire to so I'm just going to do the same just on this bottom bit 
just to create the barrel effect before we add the highlights over the top. Now you've got these fantastic 3D waves, you've got this lovely sky, you could leave the painting like that if you're happy with it, if you're a beginner at home and you're watching along and you want to you wanna leave the painting, that's fine. But because I'm trying to push people, I want to make the tutorial a little bit more advanced each week. We're going to add a little bit more detail and I'm going to teach you a few more tricks before we go for the next 20 minutes. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make a little bit of a brighter yellow. So cat yellow and a little bit of white and I'm going to start making the sky look a bit more 3D and we're going to add some highlights and some detail to our waves for the next 20 minutes. A painting comes all together right at the end. So once you've gauged where you want everything to be and you've worked out all the light, you can start really making the piece come alive and make it look realistic. So all I'm trying to do, I'm trying to create a really subtle glow around the sun. So I've made the yellow a little bit darker than before. And just coming out either side to it. So by using a darker colour in the yellow, it makes the white of that little circle for the sun stand out a bit more. So same technique, just glaze an area just to give it a gloss of paint, just to make it look like the light is sort of shimmering on an area. It gives it that lovely glow effect. So this is what I was saying about how you can glaze areas to make it look brighter or darker to match the tone and the light. So by just using a dry brush and a little bit of paint, you can do that. So just to make our waves look a bit more 3D, what you can do is swap to a fine liner, like a really thin brush and just get loads of titanium white and load the end of your brush up and use the pin like thinness of the brush to put in dots to create spray. So these are all the bits of water that spray up and you get lots of little bubbles and froth. So by just taking your time with a fine liner, you can put the nib of your brush with white paint and you can just load it up and just put little dots look like this and just do them at random just put them at different places and it looks like all the spray coming off your wave and what I'm doing here I'm just getting some of the sap green and the cobalt blue and I'm just putting in some bigger waves at the background just to make it look more 3D. I've added a little bit of turquoise to them just to make it less harsh because obviously it's further back. And I'm just going to get some titanium white and I'm just going to put some highlights over the top here as well because as I've been saying when it dries it picks up some of the colour so sometimes you just need to reapply your highlights just to make them look brighter and we're going to put some dots here, why not? so all these little finishing touches, what they do is they make the painting look pretty realistic up close but even more realistic from a foot away so they just add all the fine detail. As I say, the last 10, 20 minutes of a painting really brings the whole thing and creates the realism. So we could have some froth coming out. So take your time. I'm just getting some of the sap green and cobalt blue and I'm just outlining behind where I've just put these bubbles again just to give it some shadow 
So all you're really doing is you're working between the two, the two poles, the, the dark shadows and the bright highlights. So all we're doing, just by putting a harsher edge there, it looks like the deep water is bellowing up and creating that wave. And I'm just creating some lines, because as I say, it's like a barrel comes down and round. So it's just to emphasize that. So cobalt blue, sap green, and a little bit of your turquoise mix. And if you want to darken it up, you just add more cobalt blue. So we're going to put some shadows just underneath it, just to give it the 3D effect. Just at the top of the wave. As I say, just blend it in so the transitions look nice and smooth. So if you have a reference photo at home with waves, as I say, you can go really photorealistic photo just by using these techniques. So just by using the darker tones, we can add just little bits of detail. You can just make your edges look a little bit more prominent. make some of your waves look a bit more deeper by using that dark tone. So just by outlining areas, use the flat brush, use the thin edge, you can get really nice little detail. some of the nearer waves I'm just going to make it a little bit darker just add some little shadows so just adding some fine detail just here and there now what I'm going to do I'm going to get some purple and white and I'm just going to rub out most of the paint off my brush I'm just going to darken off darken up this corner here on the left hand side so I'm just going to make it a little bit cooler so if you imagine the sunlight is coming from the right hand side we've got that nice yellow sun now on the right well this area of the sky is going to be getting less heat and it's going to be more in the shade so we're just using purple and white just to emphasize that. I'm just going to make the clouds look a bit more 3D. So I'm going to get some of that color we made at the beginning. Do you remember it was orange and pink and some lots and lots and lots of white. And I'm just going to make it a shade darker just so it's not as pastel. And I'm just going to bring some of these clouds a little bit forward. Just because I think because we've done them so pastel they are so far back. So I'm just going to bring them a little bit more forward and we can add some detail. So if you think around the sun, all the colours are going to be nice and warm and bright. So that's why we're doing them in more of an orangey pinky tone. And as they move to the left hand side, they're going to get cooler. So what we'll do is we'll use some purple and we'll emphasise that. So just by adding purple to the mix, still very pastel. Can you see it's like a creamy purple? On the left hand side of all these clouds, you'll get shadow. So what we want to do is we want to darken up areas just to make it look more realistic. So as I say, it's just trying to gauge it trying to make your painting look less flat with acrylics they dry very very flat sometimes so trying to add realism sometimes you have to just go back and forth and try to emphasize areas just to make it look more three-dimensional so even at the top if you think these areas the reason the corners are darker in your painting 
is because they're getting less sunlight. So the shadows are more harsh the further they get away from that sunlight. And the more lovely and pastel, the closer they are to the sun. So it's an easy trick if you're doing this at home. Even if you do other colours, if you try to make your clouds around your sun look more wispy and pastel, and the ones that get further away, if you make more harsher, they should look more realistic. So just by going between the two tones, you can sort of blend them together. So by using the dark purple and the orange and pink and white, you can just blend the two together. So I'm just going to get some of this Naples yellow sort of mix we made with the cad yellow and white. I'm just going to go over it again. So as I keep emphasizing all the tutorials, sometimes you do just have to go over in acrylics once or twice. So just think of one of the reasons I paint my background burnt sienna is so when I add the second layer of paint, I get it exactly how I want it and I get all the streaks and all the marks out. Well, if you think of the first coat, remember it always has some of that burnt sienna shining through it, so that's why I have to give it a second coat. So highlights are the same. So say you're using really bright whites, you're using bright yellows. If you're applying a highlight and it's a bit dull, you can always go over it again once it's dry just to make it look more brighter, more vibrant. So what I'm doing here, I'm just adding a little bit more purple to the mix. I'm just making these shadows a bit harsher. So as I say, it's just trying to figure out bits and bobs. And just like the waves, sometimes you have to go back and forth and you just have to paint over it and rework areas. But it's just seeing what works. So now we've got that brighter yellow by putting our white highlight back in. It should make it look brighter. So as I say, even the middle wave, if you can see, look, the whites look whiter than before. It was a lot bluer, wasn't it? So that's what I'm trying to emphasize. If, if you want to make your highlights really stand out, sometimes you have to just reapply them once they're dry. So what I'm doing here, I'm just using some of that pastel blue and white and I'm just trying to create some wet sand. So this is just sort of the wet sand. So again, it's just all these little finishing touches to create the realism. Now I think I'm gonna darken up the corner. So I'm gonna get some cobalt blue and some of the Irish purple and plenty of white. And I think I'm just gonna experiment why not? So I like I like the painting. I need more white. So you need more white than anything. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to create sort of a shade in the sky. So we're going to do a little experiment live on camera. <laughs> so I'm doing the same technique where I'm wiping half the paint off my brush. And for some reason, I don't know why, I don't know if the brush had a bit of the dark first mix on it. Every time I touch the canvas, even though look, it's plenty of white. So this is what I was saying about sometimes your tools don't do what you want. Sometimes everything goes a bit crazy. So look, that is clearly white and purple, but as I was putting it on my canvas, for some reason, a really dark purple was coming out. So look at that. Magic, how weird is that? So for some reason, I think there was some darker paint in between the bristles and I hadn't cleaned my brush properly. Because this shade should be an awful lot lighter. Because we just mixed it. But for some reason, it's because I'm on camera, that's why. <laughs> so, just by trying to mix the lighter shades and doing our X shapes, there we go. We can create a lighter shade of purple. And all I'm doing, I'm just trying to experiment. I'm trying to sort of create sort of a look that the sky is getting cooler as it moves away from the sunlight. 
So again, it's just to frame the painting. So by doing these little tricks. So as I say, if you've dried your background and you apply or you make a mistake, like we've put an awful dark color on, you can always use a baby wipe or a wet cloth to just remove that paint. So don't worry if you're ever experimenting at home and something doesn't work out or you don't nail it first time, you've got to do it a second time. You can always change things. You can either paint over it or before it dries, you can just use a baby wipe to remove it. So I'm going to create some white and yellow. So again, dry brush, just a little paint, wipe most of the paint away. Let's do our X shapes again. And we're just blending all these colors. So I'm liking the left hand sides, but I think the right hand side is a bit too dark. So we're going to lighten it up just so we've got a nice contrast between the hots one side and the cools the other side. So I think this right hand corner, we're going to take away the purple. So as I say, you won't know till you experiment. So all I've done is I've used a little baby wipe just to get rid of the purple in the right hand corner. And I'm just adding a little bit of orange to the mix. I'm just making it a little bit lighter. So a little tiny bit of orange to that yellow and just lots and lots and lots of white, so predominantly white. And just on the right hand corner, just made a little bit lighter. And then with my mucky brush, let's just clean my brush. I'm gonna add some purple and orange together and some white. So purple and orange. And you should get a nice pastel brownie sort of tone with hints of purple. So there we go. It's like a dull earthy tone. And cause we've redone our background sky. So just like the waves, if you redo an area, just put back in your highlights. So that's what I was saying to you. A lot of the time in painting, you just do have to go back and forth to get things right. So if you redo an area, you just put things back in. Now this color is a little bit too harsh, so if you think acrylics dry darker, when this when this dries, this will look really dark. And it's a bit harsh. It's not as wispy as I want. So I'm just going to get some orange and plenty of white. Just mix it all together. So it's still a bit too dark, so I'm just going to add plenty more white to the mix. So lots and lots of white. So there we go. So orange, purple, and lots and lots of white. There we go. I'm just going to go over the top. So as I say, look, those highlights were a bit too harsh. So what I'm going to do is just go over the top and merge them into the previous color. So there's nothing you can't fix. So we keep saying to you, always go back just make areas look smoother less harsh all of this comes with practice do it so often it will become automatic so you just know how to do it so look by mixing the two tones again the transitions it looks darker on the left and lighter on the right and it looks like it's fading towards the light can you see how that works so if you use just a little bit more purple on the left hand side 
you can make it look just like we did with the waves you can make it look like it's fading and get more wispy as it moves towards the sun so by just adding white to the mix these clouds on the right hand side are just more subtle and if just adding purple you can make the other ones on the left look more dark So just putting back what we painted over. So it's all coming together like it always does right at the end. So that's looking fabulous. So I'm just mixing a little bit of purple, look, just to make a little bit darker shade. So all these areas, these are getting less sunlight, they're a little bit cooler. And then if you want to make a warm tone, just add more orange to the white. You can add a dot of pink just to make it look more pastel. We'll just merge the two together. So look, you can shade over your, I would say they're highlights, but they're low lights because they're darker. <laughs> but you can shade over areas. So that's a little trick. If you want to make your clouds less harsh you can either use a baby wipe or you can just shade over them with a lighter color so use a dry brush and just shade over the top just put some little ones in why not and then just to finish her off we're gonna get some titanium white and just on the base where the wave joins up to the shore of our beach we're just going to use some titanium white just to emphasize sort of the edge off the water to again just make it look more 3D. So just leave some areas of the shadow to shine through. But all we're doing, if you think of a little ridge, we're just creating some of that sea foam as it comes up onto the beach. go just a little bit of highlights and I think she's finished so I've signed her in the bottom left hand corner so you've got this lovely light effect and you've learned how to do a gradient in your sky you've learned how to do transitions in your clouds your background sky and the underpainting for your water you've learned how to do realistic waves and how to use dark colors to bring them forward you've learned how to use detail and highlights to add the finishing touches to make them look more realistic so thank you for watching this sunset beach acrylic painting tutorial this lovely sunset over the ocean there's plenty of tutorials now on the channel that is about 60 i think painting tutorials so my name is murray thank you so much for painting along with me at home please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and look after yourself and your families take care bye